Hello, so we continue our discussion on Fourier transforms of tempered distributions and we studied the one variable case in detail. Now we go on to the several variables. Now the Dirac delta, the Dirac delta is a as a distribution in Rn. Now the quest, first question is show that the Fourier transform of the Dirac delta is a constant function 1 it will immediately follow from the definition exactly as in the one variable case. So exercise 16 that I showed you in the first slide, we will skip over. This next question that we want to discuss is the Fourier transforms of the derivatives of the Dirac delta. When I say derivatives, what kind of derivatives are you talking about? Suppose we are talking about R2, am I talking about del 2 by del x del y? or am I talking about del 2 by del x squared or am I talking about del 2 by del y squared. So take a multi-index alpha, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n and you take del del x1 alpha 1 times, del del x2 alpha 2 times, del del, del, del xn alpha n times. Compute the Fourier transform of this, just apply the definition, put the hat on the g and then transfer the derivatives out there. And you can see that the Fourier transforms of the derivatives of the de Dirac delta are basically monomials. So if I take del del x1 to the power alpha 1, del del x2 to the power alpha 2, etc., you're going to be chi 1 to the power alpha 1, chi 2 to the power alpha 2, da, 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 chi n to the power alpha n. There will be a constant coming in because the Fourier transform exchanges differentiation and multiplication by the coordinate function, but there's an i factor floating around. So there will be some i to the power mod alpha or something like that. I leave it to you to figure out the details. So that's easy. Find the Fourier transform of the derivatives of the Dirac delta, which what is the answer? The expected answer is going to be a monomial. What about the Fourier transform of a monomial? Suppose I take a monomial x to the power alpha, what will be the Fourier transform? No prizes for guessing, it will be the corresponding derivative of the Dirac delta, but there will be some constant because of the 1 upon i factor. The Fourier transform of the monomial x to the power alpha is going to be a derivative of the Dirac delta, the corresponding derivative of the Dirac delta, and the Fourier transform of the derivatives of the Dirac delta are the monomials. So, so 16, 17, and 18 are through. Let us take the next question, question number 19. I take the unit disk in R2, x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 1 and I am looking at the characteristic function of D. That is a function which is identically 1 on x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 1 and 0 outside the disk. And that is a nice L1 function if you like and so you can compute the Fourier transform using the directly the formula. But I don't want to compute the Fourier transform, I want to compute the derivatives of this tempered distribution because in L1 function it is a tempered distribution. The characteristic function is not differentiable in the classical sense. But in the classical sense you can still compute the derivative on x squared plus y squared less than 1. In the interior of the unit disk you can compute the derivative, it is 0. In the exterior of the derivative, x squared plus y squared greater than 1, it is 0. So the derivative of the characteristic function of the disk D, that is going to be 0 inside the disk and it is going to be 0 outside the disk. So the support of this is going to be the circle x squared plus y squared equal to 1. So it is going to be a distribution, the derivatives of this distribution is going to be a distribution for which has support along the unit circle x squared plus y squared equal to 1. What is this distribution? Let us find out. Let us compute the x partial derivative del u by del x. So what is the formula? Del u by del x paired with g triangular bracket which is what? Throw the derivative on g factor, put a minus sign. It is u paired with del g by del x. But u is a function, u is a nice function, it is an L1 function. So the pairing is basically an integral over d, del g by del x, dx, dy, that is what you see in the slide here. Now use a Gauss divergence theorem to simplify it. So you got del g by del x and you, you can apply the Gauss divergence theorem and you can get minus integral over the boundary n1g ds. 
This equality, how you apply the Gauss divergence theorem, I am going to leave it to you as a vector calculus exercise. Gauss divergence theorem, and you will ask me there should be a vector field in the background. What is that vector field? I can give you that vector field. G i plus 0 j, right? That i j are the standard unit vectors in R2 or an R3 i j k are the standard unit vectors if you want to use the undergraduate vector calculus notations. Then i g plus 0 j plus 0 k. What is the divergence of this del g by del x? And so the double integral that you see is the divergence. And so it's going to be what? It's going to be n dot the vector field. What is the vector field again? g i. What is the outer normal n? n1 i plus n2 j. So n1 i plus n2 j dot product with g i plus 0 j. What is going to happen? It's going to be n1 g. And that you're going to integrate over the boundary of the domain del d. So that's how we get this. So we get that the distribution del u by del x is obtained by restricting this function g on the circle x squared plus y squared equal to 1 and integrating n1 g ds. Similarly, you can calculate del u by del y. Again, it's going to be minus integral over the boundary n2 g ds. Now I'm going to ask you what is x del u by del x plus y del u by del y? What is y del u by del x minus x del u by del y? Please compute these two and in one case you're going to get 0, in the other case you're going to get something interesting. So I leave it to you to complete the problem. So now let us prove the theorem of Liouville that I promised last capsule. In the last capsule we proved that if you take the Laplace's operator, Laplacian of u, if u is a tempered distribution, Laplacian of u is also a tempered distribution. What is its Fourier transform? Use those formulas or the Fourier transform exchanging the derivatives with multiplication by the coordinate function. Remember there is going to be an i floating around and in one of the formulas there is going to be a minus sign floating around. But you are applying the formula twice because it is Laplacian. So Fourier transform of Laplacian of u is minus mod chi squared u hat. That is the formula that you need to keep in mind. Okay, so now we are going to prove Liouville's theorem. Uh, what is Liouville's theorem in complex analysis? It says a bounded entire function is constant. But an entire function satisfies the Laplace's equation, right? If f is entire, then Laplacian of u is 0, Laplacian of v is 0, f is u plus iv, Laplacian of f is 0. So an entire function is a harmonic function. It satisfies the Laplace's equation. And I am saying that the entire function is bounded, which means it's a tempered distribution. It's a tempered distribution. But why talk about R2? Why talk about a complex analysis? We will work in Rn. We will generalize Liouville's theorem and say that if you have a tempered distribution in Rn, which satisfies the Laplace's equation, then the distribution is actually the polynomial. Further, if you have a tempered distribution, which satisfies the Laplace's equation, and if that distribution happens to be in Lp, then u must be 0 if p is between 1 and infinity, infinity excluded. And if p is infinity, that is if the function is bounded, harmonic function, then it must be constant. So theorem 118 is a profound generalization of the classical Liouville's theorem from one complex analysis that you teach in undergraduate complex analysis courses. And the proof is going to be very simple because we have developed all the machinery that we need to establish such results. So let us take the Fourier transform of Laplacian of u equal to 0. As I said, you are going to get minus mod chi squared u hat is 0. Since 0 is on the right hand side, I don't have to put the minus sign, which means that the tempered distribution u hat vanishes away from the 0 because if chi is not equal to 0, I can divide by mod chi squared and u hat will be 0. So u hat will be 0 away from the origin, which means there is a support of u hat. u hat is a distribution which has point support, namely the origin. And last time I stated a theorem without proof that a distribution with point support is a finite linear combination of Dirac delta and its derivatives. So it's going to be summation mod alpha less than or equal to n c alpha delta naught 
to the power alpha. That is, you have to take alpha the derivative of the Dirac delta. And so, what is u? u is going to be obtained by applying hat again and doing the reflection business. So, when I apply hat again, I'm going to get u of minus x. When I take the Fourier transform of the derivative of the Dirac delta, remember the very first thing we did in the today's capsule that is going to be a monomial x to the power alpha and there's going to be some minus signs and powers of i floating around. So in any way those constants are going to be clubbed with this c alpha. So u is going to be a polynomial in the variables x1, x2, xn. So u is a polynomial and the only polynomials which are in LP are 0 if p is not infinity and the only polynomial that is in L infinity is the constant polynomial and that completes the proof of Liouville's theorem, an interesting theorem in partial differential equation that we picked up since we had done a lot of work. Okay, now we talk about a concept called restriction or localization. This concept is very familiar from elementary calculus. You take a function say sin x on the real line and you want to talk about restricting the function to an open subset. So you want to restrict sin x to the open interval minus pi by 3 to pi by 3 for example. So there is a restriction operation and you will denote the restriction by f vertical stroke g. We want to discuss the corresponding notion for distributions. How do you localize a distribution? Restricting a function to an open set means localizing the function to the open set just taking the restriction. The way to do that would be to take those functions which are compactly supported in G. So you take a tempered distribution on the real line. Again, we shall discuss it only for the one variable case. The multivariable generalization is routine. So take a tempered distribution in one variable. Then the restriction of this tempered distribution to an open set G simply means you pair U with those G's which have compactly supported in capital G. That is equation 10.17 that you see in the slide. So this is the business that we are talking about. So we use the same notation U restricted to G to denote this map 10.17. The support of U is the complement to the largest open set. So take the largest open set G such that the localization of u to this g is 0 and this g is an open set and the complement of this open set g is the support of the distribution. So the support of the distribution can be reformulated in this language of localization. Again you know from elementary analysis suppose you get two functions f and g and you know that f restricted to g equal to g restricted to g and if this happens for all the open sets then f and g are equal. So localizing is a way to compare two functions in, in small neighborhoods and C. For example, if you want to discuss whether the function is continuous, you want to discuss whether the function is holomorphic, you localize the function and you check continuity, holomorphy, these are local properties. To, so for example, if, you, if a function f is defined on an open set in the complex plane and to understand whether this function is holomorphic, you take a small open ball or an open disk restrict the function to the open disk and check whether it is holomorphic in that in that open disk. So restricting is a very important idea, localizing is very important idea. Now suppose if you have two distributions u and v, so that u localized to g is the same as v localized to g. That means that u minus v when localized to g is 0. That means that the support of the distribution u minus v is outside of this g. That is its intersection with G is empty. The support is contained in G complement. So or we say that U and V agree on G. U and V agree on G. In particular, if two distributions U and V agree on R minus 0, then what is the support of the difference U minus V? The support of the difference U minus V is simply the singleton 0 which means that u minus v is a finite linear combination of Dirac deltas and its derivatives. It means that u and v differ additively by an Dirac delta and finite limited derivatives. Pv1 over x when localized to r minus 0 is simply the smooth function 1 upon x. Now this raises the following question. Let us turn this around. 
the question I can turn around is suppose I give you a smooth function on r minus 0. 1 upon x is an example. Another example could be 1 upon sinh x, hyperbolic sin x. 1 upon hyperbolic sin x is a perfectly nice function away from the origin, right? What is hyperbolic sin x? 1 half of e to the power x minus e to the power minus x. The derivative is always positive. It's a strictly increasing function and it vanishes at the origin and it doesn't vanish anywhere else. So 1 upon hyperbolic sin is smooth on r minus 0. Is there a tempered distribution on r whose restriction to r minus 0 is 1 upon hyperbolic sin? So given a smooth function f, definition 120, given a smooth function f on an open set g in r, can you extend this smooth function to a distribution on the real line such that the distribution localized to g is the given smooth function? In other words, it's an extension problem. You're given a smooth function f on an open set. Can you extend it as a distribution? 1 upon x is smooth on r minus 0. Of course, 1 upon x is not going to extend smoothly on the real line. It won't even extend continuously on the real line. Forget about smoothness. But I'm not asking for a continuous extension. I'm not asking for a smooth extension. I'm asking for an extension which is a distribution, which is a tempered distribution. Tempered distribution can be ugly, no problem. It can be like Dirac delta and its derivatives, PV1 over X and all, all sorts of things. So the question, is there a distributional extension? So for example, that's the next question. Does the smooth function 1 upon sinh X, the hyperbolic sign, does it extend as a tempered distribution on the real line? And is this extension unique? Obviously, the extension cannot be unique, right? Because if you have one extension, add to it a Dirac delta or its derivatives. I'm going to get another extension. So the extension is certainly not unique. Let us write 1 upon sinh x as 1 upon x into x upon sinh x minus 1 plus 1 upon x. That's a simple routine algebra. Look at the first piece here. 1 upon x into x upon sinh x minus 1. Remember, x and sinh x both have a simple 0 at the origin. They are both holomorphic functions having a simple 0 at the origin. So x upon sinh x doesn't have a 0 at the origin. The origin is a removable singularity. And x upon sinh x is a perfectly nice function near the origin. And its value at the origin is 1. And has subtracted off 1. Now look at the Taylor series for x upon sinh x. What is the Taylor series for x upon? It's an even function, right? And it vanishes when I subtract off 1. So x upon sinh x is 1. So I subtract off 1 and it vanishes. And so what is the next term in the Taylor series? x squared. And the x squared will cancel with the 1 upon x. So this first piece out here is a perfectly nice function. It's a smooth function and it's a tempered distribution because it, it doesn't grow. It grows, in fact, it's bounded. And the second piece is 1 upon x. And you know 1 upon x has an extension to the whole real line. What is the extension? It is PV1 over x. It extends as a tempered distribution. So the answer is yes. That, that it does extend and the extension is not unique. What about 1 upon x squared? Remember that distributions can be differentiated as many times as you want. Take PV1 over x and differentiate and see what you get. You will get some other distribution. Try to restrict it or localize it to r minus 0 and see whether you get 1 upon x squared. The next problem, gamma ix modulus the whole squared on r minus 0. Remember, when x is not 0, i of x is purely imaginary. x is not 0 and real number. And i of x is purely imaginary and non-zero. Where are the poles of the gamma function? The poles of the gamma function are 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. Right? So mod gamma ix the whole squared. Gamma function is a, is a holomorphic function of the complex plane except for poles at 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. And so what is this mod gamma ix the whole squared? Remember that what is gamma z bar? It will be gamma of z bar. Gamma is real when x is real. Remember, gamma restricted to the real axis is real. Of course, it has got poles. You remove the poles, of course. 
so it means that gamma z bar is gamma of z bar so what is mod gamma i x the whole square is gamma i x gamma i x bar in other words is gamma i x into gamma minus i x but gamma minus i x means multiply and divide by minus i x so gamma minus i x is going to be gamma 1 minus i x upon minus i x but what is gamma z into gamma 1 minus z recall the Euler's reflection formula pi by sin pi z so this object mod gamma i x the whole squared is basically pi upon minus i x sin i x sin i x is i sinh x and so the answer is this particular function simplifies to pi by x sinh pi x and now the question I'm asking you is, is 1 upon x sinh pi x that's a smooth function on r minus 0 does it extend as a tempered distribution on the real line I think after doing question 20 and 21 it should become easy now the next question is a difficult question now you can say 1 upon x has been extended as a tempered distribution 1 upon x squared has been extended as a tempered distribution on the real line 1 upon x cube 1 upon x to the power 4 you will believe they will extend as tempered distribution what about e to the power 1 upon x squared that's also smooth on r minus the origin will e to the power 1 upon x squared extend as a tempered distribution on the real line no answer is a big no how do you prove that there is no tempered distribution on the real line such that its localization to r minus 0 is exactly e to the power 1 upon x squared that's a difficult question and that's why it's an optional exercise so the problems of this kind of extending distributions from an open set to a whole space for example I could give you a smooth function like 1 upon 1 minus x squared minus y squared let us look at 1 upon 1 minus x squared minus y squared this function is smooth everywhere except along the unit circle x squared plus y squared equal to 1 so from the plane remove the circle x squared plus y squared equal to 1 on the complement 1 upon 1 minus x squared minus y squared is a perfectly nice smooth function is there a tempered distribution which when localized to the plane minus the circle gives you exactly 1 upon 1 minus x squared minus y squared this kind of problems in other words the problems of an analogous nature in several variables become very interesting and they are highly non-trivial and call for sophisticated techniques from algebraic geometry and these matters are closely related to another problem called the problem of division in distribution theory this problem of division has been studied by a number of mathematicians Malgrange, Aaron Price, Hormander, Lojasiewicz and a whole lot of people have studied the problem of division and the literature on this problem of, on division is very vast so in the next capsule we will take up an interesting discussion on distributional solutions of ODEs with polynomial coefficients now we know that a distribution can be differentiated and a distribution can be multiplied by polynomials we are going to talk only about tempered distributions in this course and so when I say distribution I tacitly mean it's tempered and these differential equations that we are looking at have polynomial coefficients and it's an interesting question whether they have solutions which are other than the classical solutions in the next capsule we'll take up this very interesting question and we will see some new features arise when you cross a singularity i think this will be a very good place to stop this capsule thank you very much